Hi guys and welcome to uh, this video on index laws. We're looking at chapter 12.6. It's somewhere around page 690 in our textbook. So today we'll go through all of the index laws quickly and uh, we'll look at some examples and hopefully this will help you to do all of the questions from this particular chapter. So let's get going. First of all, uh, a little bit of a summary of the index laws. When we're talking about indices and we have, for example, there 2 to the power of 3, the 2 is called our base and the 3 is called our power. So what that means basically is that 2 has been multiplied 3 times. Just a little bit of a background um, to what the indices are. This also applies to letters. So when we're talking about a to the power of 4, this literally means that a has been multiplied or times by itself 4 times. Okay, let's get into our laws. So the first law. When uh, we're multiplying numbers in index form, if they have the same base, and that's important, we need to keep that base and add the indices or the powers. Let's have a look at an example. So we have here a to the power of m multiplied by a to the power of n. When we actually work this out, we literally plus those two, the m and the n, we add them together. Let's have a look at a quick example here. We have a to the power of 2 times a to the power of 3. And when we actually work that out, we add them. So 2 plus 3 gives us 5, and we keep the same base. That's what our law says, that we need to keep the same base. Bit of a harder example, 4x to the power of 6 times 2x to the power of 2. Let's see how we do this one. First of all, we have to actually times our bases. So 4 times 2, we literally have to times that we multiply them together. And then we add the powers. So 6 plus 2 will give us 8 eventually. We keep that x. The x doesn't change. Nothing changes about it. So 8 comes from 4 times 2. x, like I said, stays the same. And the 8 comes from 6 plus 2, adding our powers. That's our first law. Very simple. Next. When dividing numbers that are in index form and they have, again, the same base, we keep the base, just like before, and this time subtract the indices. Let's have a, have a look at a quick example. So there we go. a to the power of m over or divided by a to the power of n. We have the same base. We keep that base. And we subtract the two powers, m minus n. Let's have a look at a quick, simple example. We have a to the power of 4 divided by a to the power of 2. When we work this out, we, like I said before, and like the law states, subtract those powers, 4 minus 2, and we keep the same base. This becomes a to the power of 2. A little bit of a trickier example. Don't freak out. This is very, very easy. We'll go through this step by step together. Let's have a look at this one quickly. So, first of all, let's look at k. That's the first letter that I picked. You can start with any letter that you want. Normally, you keep it in alphabetical order, though, but anyway, we'll talk about that later. So first of all, we start with the top line. k to the power of 9 divided by k to the power of 3. Like the law says, when you are dividing numbers that are in, in index form, we need to uh, keep the same base and subtract our powers. So we literally do 9 minus 3, and that gives us k to the power of 6. Okay? Second letter on the top of our fraction is P. So we have P to the power of 6 this time, divided by P to the power of 2. Again, we subtract our powers. So it becomes 6 minus 2 gives us P to the power of 4. Remember, we keep the same base. We keep the letter, in this case being P. The bottom of the fraction. Again, we have K, this time to the power of 4, divided by K to the power of 5. So again, we subtract our powers keeping the same base. 4 minus 5 gives us minus 1, and that's what we have as our answer here on the bottom of our fraction. Next up, we have p to the power of 2 divided by p to the power of 4. Again, we're dividing, so we subtract our powers. 2 minus 4 gives us minus 2, or negative 2, and we keep the same base. Now, we can actually go one step further from this, and simplify this whole fraction again, because what we have basically is k to the power of 6 and p to the power of 4 divided by this bottom half here. So again, it's the same thing. It's a fraction. We can simplify it. First up, we look at the k's. 
we've got k to the power of 6 divided by, because it's an, a, on a fraction line, divided by k to the power of negative 1. 6 minus negative 1 gives us 7. That's where the 7 comes from. So what we did there was 6 minus negative 1. If you do that on your calculator, you'll have a look that it gives you 7, and we keep the same power. And with the p, we do the exact same thing, and we just, uh, we just subtract it. So we do 4 minus negative 2. 2 minuses make a plus. We get p to the power of 6. So our final answer there is k to the power of 7, p to the power of 6. And there it is. Next up, any number to the power of 0 equals 1. This is a very, very simple one. Any number to the power of 0 equals 1. Best example is there. Um, a to the power of 0 gives us a straight out 1. It's probably the easiest one to remember. Next up, when raising a number in index form to a power, keep the base, just like we've done so far, and multiply the indices. Now you're probably wondering, what does that mean when you're raising a number um, to a power? Well, there's our example there. So we have a to the power of m in brackets, and everything is raised to the n. So what we do here is we multiply, we times those two powers, the m and the n. So we're timesing them. Let's have a look at an actual example here uh, that you'll come across in your book. So we have 2x to the power of 3 in brackets, everything raised to the 3. First step that we have to do, we've got a number inside this bracket. So what we have to do actually here is raise that number inside of our bracket to the power outside of the bracket. So we do 2 to the power of 3, or 2 times 2 times 2, and that'll give us 8. And then we multiply our two powers here, the 3 inside the bracket and the 3 outside of the bracket. We keep the x, 3 times 3 is 9, so our final answer is 8x to the power of 9. Almost there. When a product uh, in brackets is raised to a power, each factor in the bracket is raised uh, to the power as well. Let's have a look at a quick example. Again, we have a and b in brackets raised to the power of m. What we do there is both the a and the b have that power of m, are raised to the m. Quick example, again, 3mn in brackets squared to the power of 2. We raise 3 to the power of 2, so we do 3 times 3, or 3 squared, gives you the same answer, gives you 9, and then we take each letter individually. Our first one is m, and we put it to the power of 2. Our second one is n to the power of 2, and we write it out just like that there. Another example, we have a, uh, a fraction here, a over b, in brackets, raised to the power of m. We raise a to the m, keep the fraction line, and then b to the m, just like that. Okay? Last one. Almost there. So, in this one, this one says that a number raised to a negative power is the same as the reciprocal of the number raised to the positive of that power. Let's have a look at what that means. Quick example, we have a to the power of negative m. How would we write this? How do we get rid of that negative uh, m there? Because when we write our, our answers, they always have to be um, to positive. They always have to have positive indices. So what we do is we simply put all of that over 1. So 1 over a to the power of m. And we don't need to write that negative anymore because when we raise it to a negative, uh, it's the same as the reciprocal. The reciprocal just means you put a 1 on top of it. You put 1 fraction bar a to the power of m. Let's have a look at another little example. This involves, is a little bit tricky one, because it involves using a couple of different index laws in the same question, and you'll, you'll come across that uh, quite a bit in the questions you'll do in this particular chapter. You'll have to use more than one index law for the one question. So that's our question there. First up, let's t uh, take care of, of our powers here. We have a to the power of 3 multiplied or times by 8 squared. Because it's times, our first index law says that anything that's times, we need to add it together. So 3 plus 2 gives us 5, and we keep the same base. Next up, we look at the b's. b to the negative 5 and b uh, squared 
Again, we add those two. Negative 5 plus 2 gives us negative 3. So we've got our, the first part of our answer here. A to the power of 5 and B to the power of negative 3. Now we've got that negative in there. We have to get rid of that negative because when we write our final answer, it always has to have positive indices. What do we do? Simple. We place the A to the power of 5 on top of the fraction and the B to the power of 3 goes on the bottom of the fraction and now we can get rid of that negative sign. It's not there anymore. So our answer is uh, has been written in positive indices. It's got positive numbers and we can actually uh, say that that's our final answer and you'll get that correct on, on a test or on an exam. Now just a couple of, um, a couple of, of hints or pointers um, when you're doing these sorts of questions. Always cancel any uh, common factors if you can. Expand brackets by multiplying your indices and always simplify the term. So for example, like I've got here, I've got two a's, a to the power of three times a to the power of two deal with that first so you only have one A left over and then deal with anything else that you need to deal with for example in this one we had the negative here so I got rid of I only I turned two A's into one by adding the powers and I did the same with the B's and then I dealt with that negative there by doing the reciprocal by putting it on top of the fraction remember guys uh, if you have any questions please let me know and uh, don't forget that you can always go back to this video and uh, rewind it, pause it, fast forward it, so you get all the examples. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in class, guys.